Thank you, thank you very much. Hello everyone, this is Rick with XYZ Modeling and Graphics. And today we're going to be working on month number two of the D'Augustini Star Wars Build Your Own X-Wing. And I'm very anxious to get started. We're going to be working on issues five through eight today. And just in case you're wondering, I'm a little bit behind on these videos because these parts were on back order. So the 25 month project has now become a 26 month project, but that's okay. I was able to finally get my other project completed, which is the Polar Lights USS Enterprise 1301A from Star Trek A Motion Picture. And as you can see, we've got all the lighting effects working and I actually had time to make a custom 3D printed base for the model. But let's get back to the star of the show, which is the X-Wing, and let's get going with issue number five. So as with the other issues, I'd like to go ahead and open up all my packaging and make sure everything's present. All the parts that belong with this issue are actually there and nothing's missing. Also, I'd like to take this opportunity to examine the pieces, make sure that there isn't any damage or flashing or anything that's going to hinder my progress in this build. The other package that's in, the, in this issue is the parts and pieces for the third leg of R2. And they're all quite small, so I'm going to throw them in my bowl and make sure that nothing gets misplaced or dropped or wander off on its own. So with the center leg, not a whole lot to it. You're basically just pushing a couple of pieces together. The main body portion of the, the leg, there's just two halves, cut down the center and you just push them together. Pretty straightforward. There was a couple little detail pieces that fit along both sides of the foot and I had to use modeling tweezers here. These parts are quite small and that helped me get those little pins aligned to get those inserted into the sides of the leg. Now so far with this model, D'Augustini has not recommended or suggested CA glue or modeling glue. But I like to go ahead and just brush these pieces just to ensure that these things aren't going to fall apart. The compression fit with these pieces actually worked out pretty well. They're in there pretty securely, but I didn't want to risk losing these pieces later on. Now I'm probably, probably spending too much time on this third leg because I believe it's only for display purposes when you decide to put R2 into the X-Wing, I don't believe that third leg can be in there when you attach R2 to the ship. But for now, I went ahead and finished that up. Now the second pieces or the second part of this build are the interior console pieces for the cockpit. Not a whole lot to these either. You have a couple of clear inserts that fit into the the negative spaces of this part so that light can pass through and give the effect that these buttons are lighting up. Probably could stand to do a little bit of light blocking inside of those pieces and which I'll probably do a little bit later on. Anyway as you can see, we've got the completed R2, the console pieces, and we're ready to go with issue number six. So with issue number six, we only really have one part to worry about here. It's the cockpit shell. We'll be taking those two console pieces that we assembled in issue five and attaching them to the interior of the cockpit shell. Pretty, pretty straightforward. We've got some screws included. 
and the only tools required is the screwdriver. So we're going to take our cockpit shells and uh, place them in there. You should always try to dry fit your pieces before you try to attach. I had a little bit of difficulty here only because I wasn't paying attention close enough to the photographs to see that I was trying to place them in an area that I thought made sense for them to go versus what the magazine said so so I dink around with that a little bit but I'll eventually find the right spot here and, and get them in but just a single screw going into the underside of the console and securing those pieces in place At some point there will be a light source beneath this cockpit and I will probably end up light blocking the underside of this cockpit just to ensure that there isn't any light leakage that occurs when the LEDs are illuminated. Now this cockpit shell is a pretty high quality plastic and has some density to it more density than the than the uh, smaller plastic pieces but it will still allow light to pass through and you can always test that by holding these pieces up to a light source and you can see that light will pass through and if you want if if realism is your goal here then you would certainly want to do that a lot of people, or I've seen people use a reflective paint to to help mitigate light leakage, but in actuality, you want you want the color to be white. And and there's some reasoning behind that. <laughs> Actually, it should be black. It's black absorbs light. So forget what I said about white. If you want the interior to glow from the inside, then yes, use white. It's more reflective than silver. So anyway, we're finally got the uh, pieces in the right spot now. And we are going to move on to issue number seven. So here we are with issue number seven. We are going to be working on the upper starboard wing and this comes with a couple of power couplings, some edge trail, trailing edge detail and a laser cannon support. All of these are friction fit or compression fit pieces, but uh, I like to brush a little bit of CA glue on the inside edges just to make sure that that piece stays in place and as well as with the little detail piece of the laser cannon support towards the edge of the wing there. So these power couplings as the magazine calls them I believe are going to be magnetic to allow the two wings to come together tightly in the closed position. Now these are just plastic pieces, but the paint looks like it might have some metallic properties to it. So I can't imagine them being of any use for anything else. I wish they would just call them what they are. If they're magnets, call them magnets. But these will be on the inside of the wing and won't be visible at all. Much like those laser emitters, these fancy housings for parts that will be completely hidden by the rest of the ship. So, uh, and these just snap into place. You have to orient them properly. It's not a perfectly circular hole or recessed hole that they seat into. There is a flat edge that has to line up properly as you insert them into the wing. But they fit in there pretty good. Again, 
I, the magazine doesn't say to do it, but you should probably use some super glue to make sure that those those things stay in place. So moving on to issue number eight, our final issue for our second month. And with this issue, we are getting some framing pieces for the starboard wing that we have been working on in our previous issues this month. And a few detail pieces that will be placed inside the wing to add a little bit more detail to it. So first we're starting off with the steel frame which fits very nicely into the to the wing. As usual, D'Agostini does not disappoint when it comes to the the framing of their models and ensures a exact fit and durability that'll help the model stand the test of time a little bit. Additionally, we have some detail pieces that will fit inside the wing, which leads me to believe that will be some openings on the second half of this exterior wing piece that will allow to see through the, the wing a little bit and get some of the inside detailing. Now I am using CA glue. D'Augustini does not recommend it, or they're not even mentioning it. Everything is supposed to be friction fit, but I'm pretty confident that I will keep these pieces in place and of course to ensure that they don't fall out. I will be painting this at some point and so far I just haven't really been that motivated to get going on it. I think I'm going to wait for a few more pieces and some parts to come in before I start painting. Uh, I want to you know, be able to hit as many pieces at once as possible. So that's coming up in future episodes. We'll start getting into the painting but for now I'm just mostly concentrating on the assembly and trying to get this thing moving forward. Now, this entire month, there hasn't been much to do, which doesn't surprise me. I can't understand how a model that's half the size of a Millennium Falcon can drag on for 25 months unless you're just spoon fed these pieces when we certainly have been in this issue. It did not take me very long to to assemble these pieces or go through any of these issues. So I will say with the Millennium Falcon, I spent a lot of time on that, so it is nice to kinda of have a little bit of a a little bit of a break uh, between issues. So but hopefully month three will come on time and I don't get the whole Hey, we're sorry, it's on back order because 25 months is a long time, D'Agostini. Don't make it 26, don't make it 27. This is Rick with XYZ Graphics saying, see you next month.